This is Jordan, a country where approximately 11.5 million people live on an area of about 90,000 square kilometers. If we compare Jordan to the surrounding countries, we'll find that its area is about 24 times smaller than Saudi Arabia and about five times smaller than Iraq. It's clear that Jordan's area is very small compared to the countries around it. And at the same time, its population is very large relative to its size. However, if we look at the areas where the population lives in Jordan, we'll find that most residents live in a very small area located in Western Jordan. The rest of the area is considered almost entirely empty. This will be perfectly clear if we draw a line from north to south. We'll find that Jordan consists of two parts, the part located west of the line where the vast majority of the population lives and the part located east of the line where a very small number of people live and which is considered almost entirely empty compared to the areas west of the line. Roughly 19 out of every 20 people in Jordan live west of this line. The situation will be perfectly clear if we look at a night map of Jordan. We'll find that the areas west of the line are clearly and consistently illuminated. Illuminated. However, the part located east of the line consists of areas that are almost completely dark. Here, in the area west of the line, approximately 11 million people live, with a population density of more than 970 people per square kilometer. As for the area east of the line, about 700,000 people live there, with a population density of about 9 people per square kilometer. This means that 94% of Jordan's population lives on less than a quarter of Jordan's total area, while only 6% of the population lives on the remaining land. One of the areas that is almost completely empty in Jordan is the Ma'an Badia, located in southern Jordan. Ma'an Badia has a very large area, exceeding 30,000 square kilometers, which is roughly the same size as Belgium. Ma'an Badia consists of vast, dry desert areas where summer temperatures often exceed 40 degrees Celsius. The region is generally exposed to hot air coming from the Arabian Peninsula, which intensifies the feeling of heat for long periods during the summer. In winter, temperatures drop to as low as 2 degrees Celsius, turning the harsh heat into bitter cold, with the region also experiencing sandstorms almost year round. That's why the area is generally completely empty, with no form of urban development. Ma'an Badia is part of the Ma'an Governorate, and the Badia itself within the Governorate is surrounded by cities like Ma'an, Tefila, and Shubak, most of which, as you can see, are located west of the line and are home to most of the population. If we look at the map of mountain distribution in Jordan, we'll find them widely spread in the western regions, from north to south. These mountains rise as we move southward, reaching their highest levels at the southern border with Saudi Arabia. Here, the mountains reach an elevation of more than 1,800 meters in the Jabal Um Al Dami area, making it the highest mountain peak in Jordan. These mountains in western Jordan trap a large amount of moisture coming from the sea and prevent winds from reaching the area behind them. This leads to the formation of clouds and rainfall. Moreover, the elevation of these mountains above sea level makes their temperature much colder than areas at the same sea level. Here, summer temperatures are generally between 30 and 35 degrees Celsius, and in winter they drop to less than 4 degrees Celsius. Consequently, the weather here in the mountainous areas is much better than all other regions of Jordan. The humidity coming from the Mediterranean Sea, which leads to rainfall, increases the chances of snow falling on the mountains when it collides with extremely cold air. That's why this region sometimes experiences snowfall during winter. The winds coming from the Mediterranean Sea have a very strong impact in the north and gradually decrease as we move southward. Throughout the year, this region is exposed to winds coming from cold areas in Europe, which helps moderate temperatures. That's why temperatures drop in the areas west of the line, especially in the north. These mountains west of the line prevent moisture-laden winds which cause rainfall from reaching the areas behind them. This makes rainfall in the areas behind the mountains very rare. That's why these lands are dry desert areas, devoid of any form of urban development. 
unlike the area in front of the mountains, which has fertile soil, green spaces, valleys, and forests extending over large areas. In the area west of the line lies the Jordan River Valley, which extends from Lake Tiberias in the north to the Dead Sea in the south. This area is located next to very high mountains, but the valley itself descends to 400 meters below sea level, reaching its lowest point at the Dead Sea, which is the lowest point on Earth. Winters in this area are mild and much warmer than in the mountainous regions, but summers are very hot, with temperatures increasing as you move south towards the Dead Sea. The areas surrounding the valley receive large amounts of rainfall, but the valley itself does not receive enough rain. Instead, it relies on rainfall that occurs in the surrounding elevated areas, from which water then flows into the river. That's why the eastern bank of the river, located in Jordan, has the most fertile lands. This area, despite its very small size, is literally Jordan's food basket. Fruits, vegetables, and palm trees are cultivated here. And there are very large areas of banana plantations whose cultivation is widespread because it is very suitable for the high temperatures in the region. If we look at a map of Jordan from a slightly farther distance, we'll find that Jordan is surrounded by five seas, the Arabian Gulf, the Caspian Sea, the Black Sea, the Mediterranean Sea, and finally, the Red Sea. However, Jordan possesses almost no coastline on any of them, except for this part of Jordan, which has a narrow coast overlooking the Red Sea. The first thing that comes to mind when you hear this information is that the weather in this area is much better than all other regions of Jordan. But the truth is quite the opposite. The weather in this region is almost the worst among all areas of Jordan. The Gulf of Aqaba is located in a high temperature region, and at the same time, its width is not great so the amount of water in it is not large, and water circulation is very slow. This ultimately leads to a rise in water temperature, and instead of playing a role in moderating temperatures, the opposite happens. Consequently, the water evaporates, increasing humidity in the air, which further intensifies the feeling of heat. At the same time, this region is exposed to hot air coming from the Arabian Peninsula Desert, which further raises temperatures. That's why, if we look at the places where the population lives in Jordan, we'll find that the areas in the south have fewer inhabitants, unlike the area in northwestern Jordan, which is home to the vast majority of the population. Therefore, if we change the path of the line we drew earlier and move further north, we'll find that 55% of Jordan's population lives north of this line in a very small area, while only a quarter of the population lives in the vast area south of the line. In the area north of this line lies Amman, the capital of Jordan, home to approximately 4.5 million people with a population density of more than 2,600 people per square kilometre, making it the largest city in Jordan and among the largest Arab capitals. The areas east of this line are dry desert lands, unsuitable for agriculture and devoid of any large population centres. Life in these desert areas is limited to Bedouins who live in the middle of the desert without the most basic necessities of life. These areas do not have a sufficient number of hospitals and schools and their infrastructure is very weak, unlike the areas west of the line, which offer much better job opportunities, infrastructure, and health and educational services, especially in the northern areas, which contain the largest Jordanian cities. That's all, my friend. For all these reasons, 94% of Jordan's population lives west of this line, while only 6% of the population lives east of the line. Finally, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to get all our new updates. Goodbye.